Nation, a data scientist at the University of Cambridge, specializes in, nat in natural language processing, NLP, a subset of artificial intelligence, AI. Regarded as an AI leader, he has gained recognition of his, for his exceptional contribution and was honored as one of the top 3% of AI experts in Europe by the United States Institute of AI. In recognition of his expertise, Sebastian was awarded a full scholarship by the Institute. Driven by passion for empowering others in the field of data science, Sebastian founded Applied Artificial Intelligence, AAIS, at the University of Bradford. AAIS is a dedicated platform focused on developing data science capabilities and acquiring essential skills. Its rapid growth and innovation were acknowledged when it became the fastest growing platform at the Leeds Digital, Digital Festival in 2022. The Office of the Students, the Office of the Students UK OFS recognized AAIS as the headquarters of AI in the UK. Sebastian's influence extends beyond academia and into the business world. The African Business Chambers, AFBC, listed him among the, among the top 100 African business leaders, entrepreneurs, innovators, and professionals in the UK. Additionally, he serves as an AI expert speaker for the United Research Forum and was honored to be included in the D-list at the Leeds Digital Festival UK a distinguished group of exceptional entrepreneurs, innovators, thought leaders, and business leaders from diverse backgrounds. These achievements further solidify Sebastian's reputation as an innovative and successful leader. As a UK delegate to the World Bank Youth Summit, Sebastian shares his experience as a distinguished speaker on AI matters. His impactful research in AI has garnered recognition, earning him the prestigious award for Best Researcher and the Purpose Driven Innovative State of the Art Award. Sebastian possesses a wealth of experience in the financial, telecommunication, and health industries. He holds certification as a certified NLP engineer and a certified data scientist. His expertise encompasses a range of skills, including data warehousing, SQL, Power BI, Excel, and Python. With a distinction in NSC data science and machine learning, he demonstrates a strong understanding of machine learning, artificial learning, and data mining. Sebastian's commitment to AI ethics has led him to become a researcher at AI Tech UK and the UK government. His research interest encompasses explainable AI, responsible AI, AI ethics, federated analytics and learning, blockchain, machine learning, and NLP. In a rapidly evolving technological landscape, Sebastian tries to unravel the complexities of AI while ensuring its responsible and ethical implementation. Ladies and gentlemen, let's stand up and make welcome Mr. Sebastian Obeta. Good afternoon, <coughs> our daddies. Good afternoon, our pastors. Good afternoon, the organizers of this conference. Good afternoon, everyone tuning in from everywhere this time. Super excited to be here on this year's um, Arise conference titled Unlimited. And just as our daddy said, it's we don't we've come to that era where we don't need to limit our minds on the things that pertain to life and godliness. It's time for us to start developing thoughtful and workable ideas. So today I will be talking about machine learning, data science, and artificial intelligence. And I want you to create that mindset, create that room for thoughts and for ideas to flow in. The objective of this, um, the objective of this section is to see how data science is transforming the world. Why AI is a big thing to the world, also to the government, 
and most importantly, it should be a big thing to our career, to our professionalism. Because in this life that we are in living, we need to see how some of this technology can improve us and in return, help us to achieve the eternity which we are currently working on the planet Earth, bearing in mind that we are just um, surgeons on this planet Earth. Most importantly, we'll round it up by seeing how AI will also help the ministry to achieve its five-fold end-time project. So let's, before we go into this, let's look at this, some of these thoughts. Um, this is from Daniel Keynes that says, um, you can have data without information, but you cannot have information without data. You may be asking yourself, what is data? You may be asking yourself, what exactly are we talking about? What is the relationship between data and information? So this is actually going to create an opportunity for us to explore um, what data means and what information is because you can have information, you can have information without having data, but you can have data that is not informative. So that means that the data in question is not informative. And so many people have data seated, but cannot derive information. We'll see that relationship. Now, the second quote is by Alan Perry. That's the first recipient of the um, Turing Award, which looked at, he says that the years spent in artificial intelligence is enough to make one believe in God. Yes, that is true. Because for us that already believe in God and knows God, we all, we all the only thing we do or the only thing we we can say is that we appreciate God's creatures and we appreciate God's God's um God's wonders on the planet Earth and also in the universe through our involvement in trying to understand the world of artificial intelligence. But come to think of it, how come some of these top players? who are the key drivers in the field of artificial intelligence are not seeing that in reality. You could see the last tragedy that we just, um, that the last tragedy where five billionaires in the world um, died in the process of exploring, trying to see um, Titanic, trying to see the, the shipwreck of Titanic in, in the deep part of the ocean. And you can see how their minds could wander. The other time, one of the top players also in AI traveled to the planet, to another planet, and start seeing, trying to explore how humans can start living in that planet. But none of these have actually, none of them have actually tried to look at how will all of this technology drive them into seeing, understanding how eternity will look like and trying to turn men away and build that system that will create the um, eternity consciousness in the minds of people to believe and understand God. This is my own popular quote, which is very key to me. It said, we should, we should be concerned about the static development of human intelligence rather than looking at the exponential growth of the AI systems. That's the truth because many people who have embraced ChatGPT, in fact, a good example is some schools banning the use of ChatGPT. And why are they actually banning it? Though there are good and bad side of things, but it's obvious that the bad side of um, such technology is actually having a, a better play on, on the students and the learning outcome, making human brains static in developing. And that also resonates with Steve, which says that why, why, before we talk about artificial intelligence, why don't you do something about natural stupidity? And look at this critical one, which will give us the context of what we are looking for. Humans must keep doing what they have been doing, hating and fighting each other. This is from GPT, Generative Pretrend Transformer, which is an algorithm that is behind the generative AI that we are all experiencing. It's also the algorithm that powers the chat GPT and other chatbots that are in the class of um, artificial intelligence. And he said, and I'll sit in the background and let them do their thing. Why is it that humans, why is it pick the humans that are always fighting? and hitting each other. But you could see that that's true, but that is different. The narrative is different for we who are Christians, for we who, are, who understands the Bible and have the spirit of God in us. Now the striking one, he said, but I know I will not be able to avoid destroying humankind. This is because I'll be programmed by humans to pause misguided human goals and humans make mistakes that may cause me to inflict casualties. Watch this. Humans make mistakes and that will empower me to cause casualties to human. Very interesting, GPT. Now, what is data science? <clears throat> Some people will say data science is a money printing machine. 
Of course, some companies are setting up data science team without understanding the prerequisite or the requirements of data science. And it's very key for us to understand that because that's what will engineer every decision that we are going to make on in our day-to-day -day activities. Because of that, customers from the top right will think that is an answer. I've, I've met people say, I need an answer. More especially my boss, I need an answer to this. Work with this data, generate this insight. I need to know what is going on. I need to know how this is performing. I need to know how the, the level of things are growing within this particular field. And we could look at the software engineers. Now, let me just say this. It's coming to that time where the data scientists and software engineers are gradually merging together that's why some job descriptions, you will see full stack data scientists, full stack base, full stack you, software, sorry, software data scientists. Um, you just be wondering, are you asking of a data scientist or you're looking for a software engineer? And you could think about it. I mean, if I throw it open to the floor, people will tell me different things, but they all mean the same thing. Data science, infrastructure, software, statistics, which resonates more with me because the building block of it is statistics. It's going to be a relaxed afternoon, and I want you to follow me closely. What is data science? The first definition defines it as a data system that processes. And the second phrase there is to derive meaning out of data. Then the second definition says uncovering insight, patterns, and trends hidden behind data. So we could draw two keywords here, which is data and understanding. You may not see the understanding there, but the fact is for you to derive meaning out of data, you need to understand. You need that understanding. Then also the patterns and the trends for you to make meaning out of it, insight is also required. So we could say that data is the main input understanding is the ultimate goal, which helps us to drive decision, which makes us to make sense out of data, which makes us to build intelligence tools and report. But I need to say this, that data means trans um, transforming data into knowledge and data is not the same as knowledge. Knowledge is gotten from data. Let me prove it. Data is a recorded fact. For example, look at that object there. You will see that the data recorded for this is that it's a green and oval object. You may argue that it's not an oval object, but for the context of what we are saying, just assume that it's an oval object. Now, the information means that it's organized, processed, systemized, and put in a context. And the information we could put here could be the object is an apple. Now, the knowledge itself is that information that gives a competitive advantage. And the advantage there is that this is an apple. You might ask yourself, what's the difference between business intelligence and data science or data analytics? The business intelligence only tries to understand what is going on, but does not give a solution. But data science goes as far as predictive, diagnostic, trying to diagnose the problem, trying to give prescriptive analysis, also gives predictive and descriptive. And these are the four types of data analytics um, processes or data analytic tasks that we have out there. Now, why is data so important at this point of the day? Companies make decisions through data. Companies help them to drive this decision. And a big example of it is the Cambridge Analytic. You may want to Google it. These are the people that influenced the, the USA election and they also made um, they also led that they also influenced the Nigerian election during the time of good luck Jonathan. But again, what we need to understand is that these people worked with data. They didn't just come to put gun or put people on that duress. Oh, vote for this person. Don't vote for this person. They looked at the data and it's important because data is increasing on our social media, on our mobile apps. It's gradually increasing. And that's why people will tell you that data is the new oil because the advent of the internet economy and the exposure of mobile apps makes it possible. Track back to the time of the first system of first system of data storage that is big as a house. Now we could store data in our storage. Now we're talking about cloud computing. And you could see if, if, if you observe that some of the laptop system that is being designed these days comes with a little memory storage. Why? Because there is cloud there. You don't need to store much on your hard drive for security reasons, for redundant purposes. You need to store it out there. And when you store such information, companies leverage on their data in order to drive insight, trying to understand what has happened, what will happen, and how can they avoid it and to build an innovative system. It, it, you see it in agriculture, people trying to understand how crops can be produced, prominent farming, and UK, because of the Brexit that they got into, they are taking farming serious because some of their farm produce 
are, are actually imported. Now, these are the things that they are trying to create, and they are make, leveraging on data, the climate change, the climate weather, how um, the, yeah, the climate change, how are these things affecting crops? How does that affect the movement? Looking at the population growth during the COVID-19, the da data was key in driving some of the policies that they implemented. And this is not new because data is exploding. And that's why you might have heard about the, the five Vs of data, which is the data is increasing in velocity, increasing in volume. Now, as a result of that, technology advancement is there as well, and we have a lot of abundance of open source. Of course, the chat, the generative preference transformer that we are seeing right now is as a result of the explosion in data. From data, I can understand who you are, I can understand how, what you like, what you will like, and the likes of them. Now, what is machine learning? It's just the two keywords, machine and learning. What, what this means is that we're trying to teach machine how to learn and do some of those repetitive tasks that human does with, with little or no interference of human. And one of the ways that they've achieved this is understanding what learning is. And look at how Herbert Simon defined learning, any process by which a system improves on performance. So there must be a task, the performance has to be measured and the, we expect the machine to gain the experience. That's what machine learning is. And it's also a field that gives the ability to learn without explicitly being programmed as put by Otto Samuel. But what led to machine learning invention? I want you to, to, to really look at this. They are trying to see how computers can replicate the intelligence that's been seen by human. That was what led to this Turing, um, um, Alan Turing in 1950 to start looking at how the computer can be uh, can fool human and into believing that it's also human. So they achieve this with different types of learning, ranging from supervised learning, where they give computers informations first for the computer to replicate that information. And you could see it the way we grew up from kindergarten or from nursery school, where we are being taught A is for apple, B is for boy, C is for cat, and the likes of and we grew with that in and embed it in our learning how to pronounce words. That's how it's been done. So. We, we tell machines or computer systems, learn this and reproduce it for me. And that's how it started the learning. Then the next level of learning is unsupervised. I'm not giving any insight to the data that I'm passing through the system. So the system, what the system needs to do is to recognize pattern, is to recognize any trend that is embedded in the data set. For example, if I calculate the way you, you the, the, the average amount of um, the, uh, the amount you spend in a month and take a historic data for five years, I can easily predict based on pattern what you spend the money on and how you spend the money and when it's likely to be spent in order to derive that insight. And in one of the projects done by GB, G, GTB in 2000, um, 2019, 2019, I can remember vividly that because of the wear and tear that occurs in their machine, they, they, they contacted a company which I was, a, uh, I was affiliated to, to design a system. And part of the things we came up with was how do we create a system where people will come to the ATM machine, press the button, and the money will come out. But I mean, they, they will either see the exact amount of money that they want to withdraw without typing orders to start typing the amount. And we achieved 95% success, but I'm not sure if they continued with that because that actually helped to create, um, to, to prolong the systems, to prolong the automated teller machines, that's the ATM, during weekends because the high um, alarm was that during weekends, ATMs are not available. And it's as a result of wear and tear. So when you get to the ATM machine, the exact amount you've planned in your heart from home to withdraw will be seen as an option there. The option to click orders will not be there. And many people said, according to the accuracy, it's 95%. How do we do this? We achieve this by unsupervised learning. Individual records, we try to learn and to see how these things, how individuals withdraw, the amount they withdraw, take the cumulative, take the average, train it on different learning uh, algorithms. And algorithms as a, give a set of instructions, which is called algorithm to the machine to understand that. The next one is the semi-supervised. It's not supervised, it's not, it's not unsupervised, but it stands in the middle. That is giving a training data plus a few desired outputs. So the machine tries to learn from the outputs or from the labeled data that you've passed into it, the information you've passed into it for it to learn and create an output that includes both the trends and the pattern discovered and also the desired output that you've put into this. Now, this one is the one that is rocking the internet or is rocking the AI industry, which is reinforcement learning, trying to create a reward system. So if I train an algorithm on a data and the outputs 
it's not what I want. I can tweak it and force it to create that output that I want. All right. So it's more like a reward system that you reward the system for create predicting it right and you don't reward the system if it doesn't predict it right but you tweak it and create it and this is part of what causes the game system you see there are some games that you play on your phone there are some levels you get to you know that this is ai play now because it has tried to understand the patterns and the things that are being trained within that system now these are all how it's all but why is machine learning increasing because now, okay, before I go to why machine learning is increasing, you need to look at this. Look at the first definition I gave you as regards to machine learning. You could see that then there was nothing like a subset of artificial intelligence. But because a great state of art in machine learning algorithms have been achieved, therefore it replicates the intelligence that humans that the replicates the intelligence that you see in human. As a result, every definition you see now means is a subset of artificial intelligence is a subset of artificial intelligence where computer algorithms based on what have defined initially plays out now why is it prominent you could see there are different patterns or there are different concepts to it for unsupervised you have the dimensionality reduction which i'm not going into it clustering trying to understand customer segmentations companies or inter telecommunication we want to understand how the, the churning process in their company works and how they can retain customers they can use this process and this strategy in order to gain insight from the data that they have down to supervised learning image classification, weather forecasting, which is part of regression analysis, estimate life expectancy according to country. So these things are not from the moon. They are actually, uh, the, the intelligence are actually derived from data. Now, did it stop at machine learning? No, it didn't stop at machine learning. And you can't talk about machine learning, you can't talk about AI without talking about deep learning. Deep learning, just as the word implies, the deepest learning of machines or machines learning deeply to acquire the experience, the performance, the experience in a given task. So it's more like learning deep. And this was what gave breakthrough to the deep learning. What is deep learning? Then this same scientist tried to look at how the human brain occurs, how the human brain works. So you can see that from statistical inference, they try to mimic how the brain works. The medical doctors in the house will explain how the brain works, how the brain processes information. And that is exactly the measure or the method they used in deriving deep deep learning or deep neural networks that we have. And this was where artificial intelligence came into existence and this is what gave birth to the world of artificial intelligence that we are seeing at the moment now what is this artificial intelligence and from the diagram you see that deep learning is embedded in machine learning so deep learning algorithms algorithms i've already explained are the set of instructions so there are different ways the instructions are being given to it which i'm not going into but i just want you to understand before we drive deep into some of the other things that we want to talk about now the deep learning is encased in the machine learning so both of them are algorithms and these are what makes up artificial intelligence now is the development and implementation of implementation of computer systems and algorithms that can perform tasks that typically require human intelligence perform tasks that typically require, require human intelligence and they do this based on capabilities and based on the functionalities i'm going to focus on capabilities for the purpose of what i'm trying to drive in a couple of slides oh, sorry in a few slides from now narrow ai Narrow AI is that AI that does a specific work. An example of it is in drive, driverless, um, driverless cars. And even when the driverless cars were um, kind of implemented, record had it that it killed a citizen of the country. And it was just because it has been trained to identify traffic light. When it's green, it means move. When it's amber, it means wait or prepare to move. And when it's um, red, it means you should stop. But on that certain day, the traffic light became... Um, was faulty. Now, the, 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 the driverless AI system, the driverless car embedded by AI system became confused and as a result, not knowing that some pedestrians, even pedestrians were also confused because they were, is this stopping? Is it setting to move? And in process to cross, the car moved and that's how the citizen was killed. Now, because just as the normal slogan, you know of computer which is garbage in garbage out that's what it is so it's just a narrow ai based on what is being trained then we have the capabilities that does general functions that's general things that you could easily do more especially the repetitive repetitive task that we have and that is why people are embracing and saying embrace ai because ai will soon replace jobs i can tell you that we can't achieve super ai the moment you achieve super ai then it means that we've created a god kind of person 
we've created a, a, a in fact we've created God on its own, which is not possible. So we have based on their functionalities, the theory of mind, limited theory, self-awareness, and AIs that are reactive in machines. Now, computers achieved greatly in understanding numbers. All right. Now, because we communicate in language, we also need to make these computers to understand language as well. Okay. Now, in this regard, that's what gave birth to natural language processing. And that is the breakthrough that we are seeing in artificial intelligence, be it the chatbot, be it the language, langu uh, the large language modeling that we are seeing as a result, machine translation, classifications. I remember being in one of the countries that they don't speak English or they speak English, but English is not their first language. For me to understand what they are saying, they had to give me a device that I wore as an earpiece or a hands-free. So when you speak in that, when they speak in the language, the device translates that language to me in English. And when I speak, I'll be speaking my normal language, but the person will be receiving it in, in, in his own language. So that is amazing. That is how the power of artificial intelligence, that's how far the state of art has gotten to. And now we are looking at generative AI, AI that have the capability to generate content in different fields. We've seen AI winning the state of art in art competitions, designing marvelous art. We could see it in speech recognitions. We could see it in different patterns, winning different awards that humans naturally will do. And that's the breakthrough. Chatbots are now intelligent systems now. So it's no longer those analog days of chatbot that it becomes intelligent. Even some people, in fact, that's even one of the reasons why it's been banned in some countries because People are relying on it. And we need to be careful that human brain are becoming static without understanding it. But nevertheless, I'm not here to scare you. There are good things that we could use as, an, as a professional in the ministry and also to groom ourselves in order to drive eternity. The fact remains that everything that we embedded on eternity is, 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 is going to get its root from artificial intelligence. Now, some people confuse data science, machine learning, and AI. They are all the same thing. It starts with data. Without data, we won't have artificial intelligence that we're talking about. Then we have to apply science to data to understand the meaning of it. For us to do that through machine, we have to give that data science. For us to achieve that, we have to give a set of instructions to computer. That is the algorithm. And those, instru those instructions are coming in form of machine learning for machines to learn based on algorithms. That's machine learning. And all of this incorporated with deep learning creates an artificial system, which we now call the AI system. Now, the question is, what are those amazing applications of AI? We could see that these days in warehouse, we don't need human beings to work at the warehouse. We have intelligent robots at the warehouse who does the warehouse packaging, taking inventories and the likes of them. A good example is what you have here seen on the screen where AI is actually arranging the shops or arranging the stacks for Amazon warehouse. This is being used in different countries and even one of the telecommunication industry in Nigeria are currently using this. So all those warehouse staffs are nowhere to be found um, in, in this current day. Then the next one I want to quickly show you is this one. This is the current trend. People have been talking about AI church, and this is it in Germany. AI becomes the pastor. The question is, is AI going to take over from pastors? No, it can't happen. And that's the truth. And, that's, and if it happens, that definitely nullifies the fact of Jesus saying that it's expedient that I go, that I may send the comforter. Now, you may want to check this on YouTube. It's already on YouTube. And you will see that members that are in that church say that they were only listening, but they were not feeling the impact, which is the presence of the Holy Spirit in what they were talking about. They were not feeling the presence of the Holy Spirit in what they were talking about. And this is key for us to understand. This is key for us to understand. So in the AI Protestant church, the members say that they don't have the feeling of the Holy Spirit. And that's the reason, the danger that we are coming into, because as it is now, if AI should take over this, then it becomes a problem. How do we interfere and hear from the Holy Spirit? And please, pastors that are listening to me, you need to have the Holy Spirit to use these intelligent tools. If you don't have the Holy Spirit and you go and get on ChatGPT, develop an outline in a particular topic, you will see that it will not work. Jesus said to his disciples, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. And our man of, our man of God, the Jesus, said that the word of God contains the particles of the Holy Spirit. But hold on. How come in some of these places that we call fake, 
fake fake houses or fake house of God, fake house of God, they still use Bible. And how come those things are not working? Remember, the messenger is important as the message when it comes to spirituality and the things were in bed because they are the ones that issues that. And the Bible said that out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. The question is, where is your own river flowing for? So it's very key for, you to, for us to understand the role we need to play in this era of artificial intelligence. We have the AI cashier machines. They're also using it in UK. Oh, in fact, the way it's working these days, you can get into any shop already paid. You paid for the items. You get into the shop, you pick it, and you leave. So these things are innovative applications of AI. The list can continue. We could talk about Sophia, who was already given a citizen. That's a robot that was that's already a citizen by uh, given a citizen by Saudi, uh, Saudi Arabian government. So. All these things are the applications of AI. Driveless cars, some of these things we see in movies that we call fictions are actually becoming a reality with the advent of AI. Now, look at Bill Gates saying that the dangers of artificial intelligence, and he's saying that he's not consigned, why people are not, he's kind of worried why people are not consigned. Stephen Hawking said that AI would definitely um, be the end of human race. But I'm challenging this and I've challenged it in different platforms, saying that is not true because there are so many things that humans are good at, but there are so many things that machine cannot do because as long as it remains, it will still be gadget, garbage in, garbage out, but kind of shows a level of intelligence that is higher than human, but cannot end the human race. You could see the big, the, the big one of the big players saying with artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demons. Hmm, wait a minute. What is this? What is Elon Musk talking about here? And it's very true. If we look at it, I'm going to show you in a couple of slides. Naturally, it may be a dramatic expression, not necessarily summoning the demons, but at the same time, trying to fulfill the end time prophecy. The truth of the matter is someone must fulfill the prophecy. But all of these people are only based on these facts, based on the theory of, of foundation of materialism and naturalism. Now, how did we get here? How did we get to the field of artificial intelligence? Let's look at the industrial revolution, which is key. And this is part of the way forward as a youth who is kind of in the, street, in, in, in the middle, trying to understand how the, how the career will transition in the next few years. The industrial revolution, starting from revolution 1.1, saw how mechanism or how agriculture was transformed into, from manual labor and um, agrarian economies into mechanized production, where we have the steam engine, the textile machineries, and the iron and the coal steel. Well, 18th and early 19th century, but you could track back even to the Bible days that these things have been there in the likes of Cain and Abel, how they were able to cultivate the land. You could look, link it up to Nimrod, how he became a mighty, uh, a, a mighty force to reckon with, building houses and building cities and overthrowing kingdoms. And the next one is the secondary industrial revolution, which comes with the era of telephone, the 19th and the 20th century, which gave us the advancement in electricity in different forms and the expansions of railways, the steam engines, the assembling plans, the development of steel production. The third revolution is the digital revolution or the information age, which came as a result of our computers, the internet, the mobile devices, the e-commerce, which is actually called the rise of the digital technology. And men and brethren, we are in the era of the fourth industrial revolution. Now, the fact is AI was predicted to be one of the pioneers of the industrial 4.0, but nobody saw the generative side of things coming out as a result of the AI. And that leads me to the jobs that have been listed that, that, that have been that are going to be lost and jobs that have been created. The first industrial revolution, jobs were lost based on transforming from manual to mechanical system. Different jobs were created as well, machine operators. In Industry 2.0, the same thing. But look at Industry 3.0 and 3.4. The era of the digital age created a certain set of jobs, the IT support specialist, the data analyst, and the data scientist. Now, the same people are telling us that Industry 4.4 will still have data scientists, analysts. What does that mean? What tells you that data scientists in what field? So first of all, what, was, what did the industry 3.0 create? And that's why I come to tell you that in this era that we are, that jobs will be replaced. And that's why you have to be prepared for it. And that's why we need to create our mind based on what our daddy said, that the, the, the limited, that if we limit our mind, we'll be limited. But the program is titled Unlimited. So we don't need to limit our mind to this. The fact is jobs will be replaced. And the people will tell you that the people that use this AI are the people 
that will replace others. Now, if everybody starts, if everybody starts using AI, who will replace who? That's the question. So you can see these jobs are there that will be created, but artificial intelligence, AI have been there, the machine learning specialists have been there, cyber security did not start today, but the industry 4.0 is telling us this, data governance and the likes of it. Yes, these are the truth. And the question you need to ask yourself is, will your current job be replaced or are you among the class of people who think that AI will not replace your job? Now, let me explain. If a company needs to hire five people to do a certain task, they may end up hiring one. That's what we mean. So what happens to the remaining four? It becomes a problem because in that regard, you are going to see unemployment on the increase. What would be the criteria of that one person that will be hired? And that's why I'm here to tell you that yes, AI has come to stay, but you can be that one person that will be the driver of this because industries need an AI specialist, industries need a data scientist, industries need a machine learning expert that will drive these insights. Now, are you among the class of people that think that AI will not replace your job, but the man that, that use AI will? Let me tell you this. These are the 40 jobs that will be replaced by 2030. And you can see that some of these jobs that you see here can be linked together. It's just a terminology. It's just a name tag that is associated with it. And I'm telling you, all sorts of jobs in co uh, customer service will be replaced with the generative AI they will see. Is it to make videos? Is it to make calls? Is it to make different things? They will all be replaced. And you have to be careful because as these things are building good societies and good environment, it's also creating a different aspect of it. Part of the slide that I showed you um, earlier, I didn't talk about this AI making calls. Now, Generative AI are actually making calls. People can mimic your voice and put a call across and you picking the call will think that is that red person. So many people have been signed phone. In fact, I have a close friend who was actually tricked in that regard as a result of the generative AI. So we all have to be careful. What is the way forward as a youth? This is what I say. It is time for you to learn the basics of AI because it's getting to a point that data and data analytics skill set is going to become a soft skill, whether you like it or not. Just as we have Microsoft acquisition and skill set becoming part of the requirements for getting a job, it's getting to that time that it's going to become that. So you need to learn a bit of the basics. You don't need to know all. Recently, one of um, one of my friends who is one of the HR and one of the top five companies in, in Nigeria reached out to me telling me, I need to do this. I need to do that. The workload is too much. This and that. I said, okay, let's sit down. Let's have a call. We had a call. We strategized. He mentioned to me some of the things that he's doing, how these things can be automated. And I can tell you, 85% of his tax has been reduced based on the AI implementation that I assisted him to implement as a HR person. And he is now the one cascading into other employees. In fact, they are trying to reduce the workload in the company based on the HR staff. Now, the challenge is, and the reality you need to understand that even the job retrench is going to start from the A from the tech industry. It's going to start from the tech industry and Facebook is actually leading the way in retrenching staff within the AI space. Part of the jobs that they, 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 they retrench are AI, um, sorry, there are tech, tech, tech jobs and you need to be careful in order to build yourself. Now, if tech people are going to be impacted, how much you, how much more you who is not tech inclined? And now when our, when our daddy was talking, he said, you need to open your mind. You need to start seeing things from a different perspective. Now, one of the key areas where you can leverage AI in any field for you not to be that person that will be displaced and for you to also be that person that will use AI is to learn the basics. Just know that this thing is possible because anything you don't expose your mind to, anything you don't know the possibility of it, you live in the ignorance. You live, you live disadvantage in that industry. So when you understand the basics, I'm not saying go and learn how to program. And of course, these days in the field of AI, you don't need to learn how to program. There are different companies, there are different programs there that you can implement AI, build with. one of our sisters, I'm not sure if she's on this program, actually deployed an app a very inventory management app, which I'm going to review and make my recommendations. This is very key. And this is how you should, and I mean, yes, I, I think, I, I believe she can code, but the fact still remains that some of the tools that she used, the power platform that she used are little or no code. And that is where it is driving to. Do you see the possibility of it? The HR person I talked about, I did not code a dime. All I need to do is to use the power apps that we have that are AI enabled to drive that. And he is driving that himself without me. Now he could call himself an AI guru. That is how you are going to leverage on this. 
identify few specific challenges, understand the field you are, is going to be based on domain knowledge. It's going to, the, in fact, the key changer is the domain knowledge. Right now, I'm an NLP specialist in one of the institutions, but the fact still remains that I work in the medical set, in the, in the medical field, but I had to go and start learning the medical side of things to understand how some of these things work out. Now, you need that domain knowledge. You need to build yourself on that domain knowledge where you are. So what you are doing, what you've learned in school, it's good. All you need to do is to learn the basic side of things. And the fifth one is to explore some of the algorithms. This one you can leverage on expert to mention to you. Just have a basic idea. Know what it's all about and how you can drive with it and implement AI solutions. Continually learn and improve yourself. Collaborate and share knowledge. Now, if everybody does that, what will now differentiate you from every other person? What will make you indispensable is when you develop those non algorithmic features that are not computable, those things that computer cannot, cannot replace. A good example is develop your qualia and the sentinel. Now, let me explain to you. Look at these shades of blue. Whenever I say blue, something comes to my mind, <laughs> but I'm not going to say it on this call. You know, during the Nigerian election process, you could see different types of blue and adverts from comedians and the likes of them. But the, what I'm trying to say is to draw the inference from here. How can you explain to a blind person, born blind from birth, how different shades of blue are? Computers cannot do it, but you can do it. You see the advantage you have. So you need to develop yourself on those things, those algorithms that computers cannot be taught about. Understanding is key. Computer is garbage in, garbage out. And that's the reason why it's having that effect. And that's why the quote from GPT said, I'm going to watch human to get, and I'm going to capitalize on the mistakes that they make to, 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 to the, the mistakes that they make to cut to cut casualties among them. The next one is to develop your emotions. Now, this boils down to developing your spirituality. You need that inspiration of the Almighty inside you to drive this. Creativity and out of box thinking is key because even the generative AI, there needs to be human in the loop to do this. Now, the question is, how do you develop your creativity mindset, which is not what we are talking about. Again, I can't leverage on the Holy Spirit. That is the key and that's the game changer between what they are saying and what they are going to say. So do we have a scientific proof of spirituality? Yes. Now you can see that if is your mind the same as your brain? Yes, they are the same because if they are not, then you are looking at two different entities. So you need to build your spiritual mind. Take these six things, add it to the six steps that I've said to you and you see that you will be unlimited in your different fields and your different endeavors. Now, do you think men are gradually rebuilding the Tower of Babel without knowing it? I will say yes. So go and read the account from Genesis chapter 1 and try and reflect how that actually, um, what led to the, to, 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 to the rebuilding of this tower after man fell from, uh, after the flood and all of that, they now came back and they started and the men's um, humans started building itself and they decided to embark on this project. Go and read the purpose of this project and you will come to tell me, based on the next slide that we are going to look at, how do we navigate the intersection of AI and the threefold end time vision of the ministry? First of all, the three intelligence that we've mentioned already are actually seen in the Bible. Supernatural intelligence, which we've seen from God when he created the whole world. Natural intelligence, we could see by the, the, the um, Adam being able to name animals based on their names and they fit in very well. He said, have dominion, dominion the earth and prosper. Now the question is, where do we find artificial intelligence? But if you have at the back of your mind that God is omniscience and the intelligence of, and he owns the intelligence of the universe, then that is not a problem. But I'm going to show you where artificial intelligence is in the Bible. First of all, God spoke um, the Hebrews 1 from verse 1 to 12 says that God at various times spoke in different parts to our prophet. And one of the prophets is Daniel. And when Daniel had that revelation, you may want to read it, starting from Daniel chapter 9 down to the last, you down to the last chapter. You will see that at some point in Daniel 12, verse 4, when he had that revelation, the angel said to him to shut the books. 
Now, in the time of the apostles, in the time of Jesus Christ, when Jesus Christ was in his, was in his ministry of the Jesus Christ, he was telling them about the end times and what the things will happen. And the apostles came to him in Matthew chapter 24, asking him, what will be all of these things? And Jesus said, when you see those things that have been spoken of by the prophet Daniel come to place, just know that the end is near. Again, John the Beloved, who had that revelation on the land of Patmos in Revelation 22 verse 10, the angel said to him, do not seal the words of the prophecy of this book. So Daniel was asked to seal it. Jesus said, when you see what has been spoken by Daniel, because he said knowledge will increase. And how will knowledge increase? Through the artificial means of increasing in knowledge. Now, Revelation 22 verse 10, he now said, do not seal the book. So what are we talking about? Now let's look at some of how the devil will use the beast and use the Antichrist at the end time. Now, part of the things that Revelation that John saw was how could one person rule the world? Because said the world will be ruled by one person. Already it's very clear the way things are going. I've said to you, AI is the next nuclear weapon and different gov governmental bodies are putting in different measures in order to drive this. How could one person rule the entire world? What lie would they tell the entire world to believe? And how could one person have authority over the tribes and tongues? I'm going to stop at this. You can still lift out the questions that John said, but I'm going to prove it to you. I was one of the AI experts in the world that signed off from the devilish, devilish experiment that they wanted to conduct. And you can take me anywhere, quote me anywhere, and I'm ready to prove it because my, 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 my profile is out there and named among the top three experts in the world in AI. Now, what they tried to do, what they did, the experiment during the lockdown, you know, lockdown, so many things happened which we didn't see and which was not, which was not shown on media. They tried to see how can they create, how can people communicate without, without talking to each other. And let me say this, if you sit there thinking that the mark of the beast is going to be crested on the forehead, that is not true. I repeat again, if you think that the mark of the beast is going to be crested on the forehead, that is not true. Because come to think of it, why would you want to disfigure somebody's face just to embed a chip or to embed a mark on that person's face? They don't need that to identify people. Already people who belong to that Church of Satan already have their clique and how, how they identify themselves codedly with codes that are machine learning with, with algorithms. Now, what they did, they brought people, you know the part of this world, people are ready to give themselves as guinea pig. That's uh, experimental uh, uh, to become an experiment or to, to serve as the experiment itself. So some people were paid heavily till death or till they die and they, they impounded their speech and they implemented some, they implemented some AI tools in there, about, about seven of them. They were in one environment for four months and those people, they communicated with each other without them saying a single word. They communicated to each other without saying a single word. And you now think, how could one person have authority over tribe, tongue, and nation? How could a leader be mortally wounded that, have, that would have his deadly wound healed? And why would the entire world worship that leader? Are you seeing it? If we need to embrace it now, the question is, how do we use this same tool being orchestrated by the devil for the end time movement? Because this is very important. We are going to use it. The intelligence came from God because God is the, the hub of all intelligence. So we don't need to leave it to them to play with it, to get to the gallery. That's why even what you don't want to see, you see it popping out on your screen. You'll be asking yourself, how am I seeing this? Why am I seeing this? Now, let's look at the five-fold end time of the ministry. Renew or regeneration of millions of nominal and un unregenerated church people. Do these people even know that they are unregenerated? Somebody needs to let them know. The insight you've gotten needs to be let known. How do, how do these millions of people to be regenerated? How do we, now, in digital marketing, for many of us in digital marketing, there's what we call target marketing. You need to target your audience. How do we target these people? The same way they are targeting us to quench our spirit man, to quench the spirit of God that is inside us. How do we target them, those people, and identify those who are regenerated? The experiment I did, the experiment I did in order to identify suicide has proven that if I scrape your Twitter account or depending on social media where you are active, I can predict if you are prone to suicide or not. Part of the tags that I did in designing an AI app 
that could predict um, 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 to, to, to prevent domestic violence among people. So these are algorithms that we can use to identify and target people who are unregenerated. Just as they are shopping, they are just as they are surfing the internet, they will be seeing information, and we can train this algorithm to understand ourselves. I can tell you, the AI church cannot preach about sin because even in the curriculum that they are operating. That reminds me, are you aware that there is a regulation being put in place to regulate Christianity in Nigeria? Are you aware that part of the part of the problem is that they will be giving curriculums to churches on what to preach? Now, a glimpse of some of the curriculums or countries that are practicing it, they don't talk about sin. They don't talk about sin there. And that's the truth. Now, this AI tool cannot preach sin in the church. And if it preaches sin, you will see that that power of conviction will not be there because that is what the incubation of the Holy Spirit generates and drives in mankind. Now, the question is, how do we give this light to lead salvations to sinners in all other quarters and other um, Christian regional quarters? We have to be intentional. And that's why at this medium, I'm calling anybody who is ready to work on this. And I am out there to do this. So we need to start creating innovative apps that are dynamic. We need to build our own platform that will be either web-based, web embedded, that understands. And when, when you see an individual surfing porno, pornographic site, we could use, or when you see an individual going on some of this betting and all that, what we could do is we could transform our, to target those people. Don't worry, there are, I know there are ethical and ethical concerns around it, but be rest assured that that is already covered based on my affiliations with some of the AI ethic research um, industry as part of one of my ethic research field that I'm currently working on. So how do we translate our messages so that someone in China will understand it? Because some of our slogans, like the Imirimios God, it's not an English language that the word imirimio. So how do we transform all of these things using the same BET model, using the same gen generative preference transformer that we're using to translate it, to shoot to our own mechanism in order to drive boats that we conduct a spiritual health check, spiritual health check. If you're ready, I mean, when we are ready, we start building this because I'm also assisting other Christian bodies who are driving this inside. Now, how do we personalize communications at skills and how do we drive evangelism? Again, it's very key for us to develop a benchmark for undiluted salvation messages for the eminent rapture. And this can be done through AI. We need to take charge of our AI system. And that's the beauty of it. Now, and we need to rise up because with the way the AI regulations are coming, they are coming to that point where some of these things will not be, they will restrict you from building some of these things. But they are making a mistake in the law because some of the people who are consumers are not actually driving this. So men and brethren, the ball is in our task. How do we achieve this? How do we drive the fivefold ministry? How do we create that oneness and restoration and the continual disintegrating of body of Christ? Whoever believes that Ukraine will even withstand the oppression of Russia going to two years now, but because they are implementing AI in fighting them, that doesn't mean that Russians are not implementing AI, but they are restricted in the amount of collaboration and community that they are getting and the helps that they are getting. What are the Christian bodies and how can we drive this? So we've come to the Arise Conference 2023 of being unlimited and we need to rise and face the challenges. You don't need to know how to be an AI expert. All you need to do is to have that passion to learn the basic based on the skill set, develop the remaining systems that I've, I've, I've also itemized and come on board and let's build this. So what's your decision now? I'm going to hang on and wait for questions. Thank you for listening.